I've always loved to explore the area around my house. I lived in the country and always felt safe exploring the forests, as they were always my favorite place. One day, I was exploring the forest around, and also with my best friend. We heard the sounds of children playing, and so we followed the noise. We found a very small playground. It had a few swings, a slide, and even a sandbox. The whole thing was kind of off-putting because it was kind of tucked away in the woods, kind of like carved out in a clearing. It didn't really make a lot of sense, but there was also a group of these small children, wearing long skirts and strange outfits. There were no adults around. We didn't understand why these kids were dressed like this. We both thought it was very strange. I mean, we had never seen anything like it. So when I got home, I got on the computer later on and I found this random article about a skinwalker. Basically, a skinwalker is a malevolent witch in Navajo culture. They can shapeshift into any animal, and when they turn back, they are wearing the skin of the animal they turned into. Well, you might be asking, what does all of this have to do with the children that you saw in the woods? Well, the article said that skinwalkers can take the form of a child. I had a thought that these must be skinwalkers. I tried to tell my parents, but they didn't believe me. I understand that that claim is far-fetched. I even tried to tell my friends, but they thought me and my buddy were making up stories. I didn't understand why none of them believed me. I thought they would think I was telling the truth. I didn't understand how they could believe I was making up stories, or why they were calling me crazy. So, the next day, I decided to go back to that playground to see if I can find any proof that these children were actually skinwalkers or shapeshifters of any kind. I decided to take along a digital camera to take pictures of them. I wanted to be able to prove that they were indeed skinwalkers. I'm sure listening to this or reading this, you might think I'm very weird for suspecting these random group of kids in the middle of the woods in this creepy playground to be skinwalkers. But I'm telling you, if you saw them, saw what they were wearing, it just, it wasn't right. It was incredibly creepy. I was sure that they were skinwalkers, and I was going to capture it on film. I took along my blanket to also use as camouflage. My intent was to sneak up on them while they were playing. I wanted to take a picture of them, of them transforming. So I walked deep into the forest until I found that same playground. Before I even got to it, I could hear them playing. When I got to the playground, I hid underneath my blanket, and I saw the children playing, just like before. They were in the weird skirts and outfits, just like the day before, too. I mean, you gotta understand, the whole thing was so weird and creepy. So I took some pictures, but I didn't see any of them turn into animals or anything. I was disappointed. I had hoped to get pictures of them transforming. Then, I could have shown them to my parents, and they would have believed me. So, I decided to just go home and look at the pictures. I had a feeling that there was something wrong with them, but I didn't know what. I couldn't see anything on the pictures, and when I got home and went into my bedroom, I was looking at some of the pictures when I heard the window open. I looked up and saw a strange man looking at me. He was wearing a black hood, and his face was covered with a black, strange mask. I screamed, and he darted away. So I ran out of my room, running into my parents' room. I told them that there was a man just outside my house. They looked at me like I was crazy, and told me to go back. They didn't believe me. Can you believe it? I was really mad at them for not believing me. I told them it was a man in a black hood, and they honestly just blew me off. I can't believe it. Their son was in danger, and they were just so quick to write me off like they did. I was so mad that I grabbed my blanket and decided to go outside. I wanted to see if the man was still there, and so I walked outside my house and looked around. I didn't see anything, but I did see a figure 
a figure in the shadows, so I ran back into the house and locked the door. I felt like I was never going to be safe again, and now I was really scared. I wanted my parents to protect me. My only guess is that these skinwalkers, who had taken the form of these children, must have somehow been alerted to me, and now knew where I lived, so one of them must have taken the form of this man with a mask. God only knows what was going to happen. Things calmed down for a few days afterwards, after not seeing the creepy man, and not going back to that even more strange and freaky playground. But then one night, while taking out the trash, this is where I believe I saw the skinwalker creature in full. I was taking out the trash late at night, and I saw some of the children from the playground. There were three of them, and they were wearing their weird outfits. I was shocked to see them. I took a step back and watched them from behind the tree. I always saw how they were dressed in long skirts and dresses, and I had never seen a child dressed this way. I mean, they were really pale and acted robotic, with white eyes. This was like some children of the corn type stuff. They approached me, without blinking, and began speaking this strange, demonic, ancient language I had never heard of before in my life. I was so scared. I had no idea what they were even saying. So, I began running back towards the house, when I remember, everything around me became almost like a dreamlike state. I could nearly feel myself coming in and out of reality. It's very hard to explain, but I did lose consciousness at some point, and I do remember these children standing over my body, speaking in that weird language. They did speak a few words in English, though. One of them I remember was ritual, and the other sacrifice. Then I blacked out. My next memory is of waking up in the hospital. My parents were there, and they were worried. They told me that I had been found out in the driveway after not coming back in the house. They called 911, and I was taken in. They couldn't find anything wrong with me directly, but I can't help but think I've somehow been marked by these shapeshifter skinwalker children. I don't know what to do, and now I'm scared. I don't know if I was actually taken by these creatures in disguise or if I'm going completely insane. I just don't know what to do. I have a feeling that since I was the only person who ever witnessed this, they want to sacrifice and kill me and replace me with a doppelganger. I'm reaching out to you for help. What can I do to protect myself from these things? They seem pure evil, and I know they are not what they seem. I don't know if this will actually be posted, if you even read this far. I've been trying to get this off my chest, and no one believes me. I don't know what to do. If you know anything that can help me, please, let me know. I'm desperate. Please, help me. I've only ever been on the Navajo Reservation once in my lifetime, and it was for a very tumultuous week vacation with my family on my mother's side. See, my mother is full Navajo, and my dad is German. She's a total hippie, and he's a total manly man kind of guy. I think for me, I'm on the 50-50 split with my personality. I have a bit of hippie traits myself, and... I'm also a bit manly man at times. My mother is very much enriched in her cultural traditions and rituals, while my father is not. After I was born, we had since moved away long ago, but did go back about six years ago for a week when all this happened that I'm about to tell you. My story involves dealing with something I never knew existed until this trip. Skinwalkers. Now, I'm going to explain what they are to the best of my ability, and you can decide if I'm crazy or not. I mean, sure, I could be, but I am a bit crazy after all. But this story? I have witnesses who are still alive. My mom. I was 16 years old at the time, and our plan was to stay on my mother's parents' trailer near the edge of the reservation for a week. Due to our upbringing, which I won't exactly get into, we didn't have a great or close relationship 
with my mom's side of the family. Yeah, we would visit on the phone. We had no problems with that. I do, however, have a problem with it now. But that's a different story for a different time. So, we're at my mom's parents' house, in a trailer. And my grandmother has a bunch of these strange native wards all over the wall. My relationship with my grandmother is healthier than my grandfather. So, I was asking her, what are these for? And she explained it's for protection against evil spirits. I figured it was just a bunch of hocus pocus. And I was like, cool, whatever. I'm going on a walk. I need some fresh air. My grandmother, however, is a bit more into this than I thought. As I was walking away, she told me to be careful and not go too far because she feels like something bad might happen. I had been stuck in that trailer for too long, and I felt like I was kind of suffocating. Because of where we were at, there wasn't a whole lot of places or really much to walk around. It was kind of just out in the middle of nowhere. So, I made the best of it. I looped around the trailer out in the middle of nowhere, going up this semi-large rocky hill, just a little ways away from the trailer, but still within eye distance. This way, I could get a better view of my surroundings. I did find something weird, though, that disturbed me. I found a dead coyote with a wooden stake driven through its chest. I'm from Arizona originally, and there are coyotes all over the place out here. But this wasn't that strange. What made me suspicious was the fact that someone had clearly managed to kill a coyote by driving a stake through its heart. As much as that bothered me, I tried not to dwell on it too much. And maybe it was just some psycho out here at night with nothing better to do than to sacrifice animals. It's not like I had anything to worry about, after all. It was only in the afternoon, completely light out, so I felt safe. As I'm standing up here, though, I feel this weird sensation come over me. It was like a chill, but it was felt internally. Then, coming from all around me, I hear sounds like whispers or somebody talking, except it sounded like a bunch of people talking all at once. This had me a little freaked out, so I decided to just go back to the trailer. I had had enough of being outside for the time being. I go back to the trailer and was just watching TV with my grandparents when my grandfather decides to go out for a smoke with his tobacco pipe. As he's walking out, my grandmother, her whole demeanor changed and she gets a very bad feeling. She tells me to make sure he doesn't go anywhere and that he not go too far. So I'm like, okay. So now I go outside and follow him. Now, remember how I said it was 16 at the time. I should be in good enough shape to follow a 70-year-old man, right? Well, even though I was active and in good shape, I was still just a kid. So I'm walking behind him, and I'm so far behind him because I can't keep up with his fast pace. Faster than any 70-year-old should be able to walk. And what I'm not understanding is why he is walking all the way out here in the middle of nowhere just to have a little smoke, and why he wouldn't just stand off a few feet from the trailer. It all didn't make any sense. So here I am, struggling to keep up with him. I'm not very happy about this. He's either delusional or was doing something. I mean, he is my grandfather and all, but we had a very strained, strange relationship. He was never very social, never talked much. So I'm struggling to keep up with him, and I finally catch up to him, and he's standing there, just looking at something. I'm not sure what he's looking at at first, but then I see it. The land kind of dipped down before I could see what he was seeing and had to catch up to him. There's a coyote. He's looking at a coyote. I'm looking at him, and then this coyote looks at me. Then, the coyote starts walking toward me, but it does this by first standing up on two legs and walks. At this point, I'm scared. I try to tell my grandfather to run, but he doesn't seem very concerned. He's just standing there, looking at this coyote walking toward us casually. 
I'm getting more and more scared as this thing approaches closer and closer. Not whether to run myself or watch what was about to happen. The coyote keeps walking toward us, and now he is only about five feet away. I'm freaking out and trying to think of a way to get this thing away, but I can't. So this thing just stops and looks intently at my grandfather, starts speaking this deep, guttural voice that I've never heard before. It kind of sounded like a demon. Then, in complete shock, my grandfather casually responds to this thing in the same language, with a very similar, unnatural voice that clearly wasn't his. It's like he was possessed. What was I witnessing? I was so terrified I ran back to the trailer. I was baffled and confused and scared crapless, to be honest. I did not see my grandfather for the rest of the day, and to be honest, I was kind of glad. I was in a bit of a state of shock. I told my grandmother what I had just seen in a complete panic. What is it? What did he say? I told her they spoke this language I did not understand. And she tells me this. What you saw was evil. They tried to kill your grandfather shortly after you were born. They are very powerful. They're also very dangerous. And then told me that's the main reason why they tried so hard to keep a distant relationship to keep these things away from my mother and I. She still acted very strange about the whole thing, like she was keeping secrets from me and not telling me all the details. This is not how anyone would normally act after seeing their own grandparent speak in a possessed voice to a walking upright coyote who also spoke in that same voice. I didn't know what was going on, but after a little bit of information, she kind of just shut down. She explained that a skinwalker is an evil shapeshifter who can transform into any animal they want. It uses its abilities to harm others for its own benefit. Usually, these abilities are used for killing, or for whatever reason, as long as it's personal gain. They're also used to steal things. They can be used to harm livestock. Anything. She explained to me that what I saw was a skinwalker entity. She didn't use the actual words skinwalker, though. She called it what they do in Navajo, but told me to be very careful about repeating that specific word because it draws them in. So I locked myself in the room the rest of the day and night, unsure of what I'm supposed to expect now that everybody was acting weird and I had totally saw something that made no sense. It's like the X-Files in real life. I was even terrified to stay here. The next day, I wake up, and my grandfather was sitting at the table with a cup of coffee. I looked at him. He looked at me. We looked at each other for what felt like an eternity. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know anything what to say. So I looked at him. He looks at me. I just got the feeling he was not in his right mind. He was not the same person I remember. I didn't know it at the time, but I was going to soon learn something that would change everything. He told me in a very firm tone to come sit. I did the whole cliché gulp, and I did. I sat down across from him. He looks me straight in the face and says, I had to do something I regret doing in order to save my family. I know you don't understand, and I don't expect you to. I'm warning you now. Stay away from me before danger starts coming your way. I didn't say anything at first, and maybe after a minute or two of silence, I told him I didn't understand what he was talking about. So, without going into too much detail, he explains that he has powers that far transcend what I could ever imagine, but they come at a cost. He explains it to me that, so I don't get hurt, I should keep distance. He was very sincere in his tone and warning me for my own good. Honestly, after that, I was done. I just locked myself in the room the rest of the trip. 
terrified to even come out because first the coyote thing, then seeing a walking coyote, and now my grandfather telling me he has powers? What was I, an Alice in Wonderland here? The end of the trip comes, and I keep in my mind that my grandmother is still acting super sketchy. My mom's being weird, too. It's like everybody is somehow in on this big, weird conspiracy that I don't know about. Well, the night right before we have to leave, it still remains weird and uneventful. At least until now. This night, things were different. I was sitting watching TV in my room and decided I needed to go stand out on the front porch and get some much-needed fresh air. I had been cooped up for far too long in this room, just trying to stay hidden away from everybody and everything. As soon as I stepped outside to try and mentally process this week, it was about midnight, I think a little after. Both my grandparents were asleep. I'm usually a night owl anyway, so I quietly moved through the house and stepped out onto the porch. Out here on the res, you can see the stars at night, and boy, is it beautiful. We're out in the country, so there are no city lights to block out stars. But this night was different. I was facing the front yard, standing on the porch. The stars were very bright. I was standing there, just kind of taking it all in. Then suddenly, I felt a presence around me. But I didn't hear anything. I could just sense that somehow I wasn't alone. Have you ever felt this before? Like you can just feel someone or something is around you, but you can't see them. I didn't get the impression of malice or anything. It was just a presence. I turned around, looking left, then right. Nothing. So, confused, I was a little shaken up that there was nobody there. I walked back into the house, stopped, and looked off beyond the light of the porch, and... I could have sworn I saw some shape moving quickly around the house, towards the back. I was a little scared, but I'm thinking. You know, this whole week has really affected my mentality. That's probably what it is. So, I get back into my room, turn the TV off, deciding I just need a good night of sleep. Well, I'm laying there, trying to shut my brain off and go to sleep, and I notice that the feeling comes back. So I lay there for a minute and decided to turn my light on. As I'm getting up, I notice there's something or someone just outside my window. I see a shape moving, and so I look out my window into the night. Now, I need to explain something real quick. The moon was out this night, but my bedroom is on the back side of the house, where the moon was visible and faintly lighting and illuminating things outside. Towards the front of the house, where I was originally out on the porch, you could not see the moon, because it was on the back side of the trailer at this time. So I'm looking, and my eyes are adjusting more and more, to this shape that I'm seeing kind of drunkenly stagger back and forth. And then I see it. It's a very large coyote. I'm staring out the window, trying to process this, and then, out of nowhere, these orange yellowish eyes appear and this thing starts wandering slowly towards my window it was maybe no more than 20 feet from my window when I first saw it I could not tell if it was just standing there or what it was doing but it definitely noticed me at this point I'm incredibly frightened covered in goosebumps I turn and run out of the bedroom and I go hide in the living room I'm sitting there shaking trying to calm myself and go through what I was seeing. I'm thinking that there's no way this is real. So, I convince myself to get up and start looking out the windows in the living room. This time, I realize there really is something moving out there. I have to look closely because I can't really tell what it is, at least now. I move over towards the other window, looking out, and I see that whatever this thing is, it doesn't have any color. It's just all black. And I see those yellow eyes again. Then this thing continues to move towards the window. But now, it's out where I am, by the living room. 
It's following me all around the house. I'm frozen in place. I'm not moving. I'm not making a sound. I shut the blinds and I just start to pray as hard and as loud as I can, not caring if I wake anybody up. This goes on for 10 minutes, and I don't know why I do this, but I just had a feeling to go to the back door, open it slowly and step outside. I'm still praying out loud, and I'm not seeing this thing anywhere. I feel like I can't leave the house, so I go back in and close the door, locking it. I grabbed a pillow from the couch and decided I was going to sleep right there on the floor next to the couch, so I was kind of hidden. I somehow managed to pass out once enough adrenaline had worn off. The next morning, I'm awoken by my grandmother, wondering why I was on the living room floor. I told her exactly what had happened last night. She did not say anything, but she had a very, very troubled look on her face. Like, deep down she knew something. She kind of just wrote it off and was like, okay, go get cleaned up now. Now, Fast forward to the afternoon, and we say our goodbyes. It's still very awkward and weird, at least around my grandfather, so I only say goodbye to my grandmother. We're driving back to town, and we get a phone call from my grandmother, not even 15 minutes down the road, telling us that my grandfather's having a heart attack. My mom immediately bursts into tears. She's scared and turns around. Oh, and to clarify... 911 was already called, and so then she called us. Just in case you're wondering why she did not call them first. She did. So, we turn around, get back to their house. And that's the moment when I knew my grandfather did not make it. They had pronounced him dead and could not revive him. We pull up just as they're officially pronouncing him dead. You know, the next few hours after were kind of a blur of time for me emotions, and seeing my grandmother and mother grieve like I have never seen before. Sometime that evening, my grandmother opened up and told me everything. Everything we had experienced while out there, everything I had seen, felt, and heard. My grandfather was responsible. Yes, he was a skinwalker. She expressed that, I know it's hard to believe, I know it's hard to wrap your head around but she swears in her life that she was telling me the truth. And that's all I know. My grandmother told me that it's not something you just become. That my grandfather somehow got wrapped up in black magic long before in secrecy and had to let it remain a secret. She explained to me the coyote I saw the night before and the day I followed my grandfather was actually a demon disguised as an animal. They... My grandfather and this demon allowed me to witness this because I was going to be the next target. Hence why this thing came after me, trying to get into the house. But I began praying. They wanted to take my body. My grandfather knew this and didn't want anything to happen, so he kept his distance. I know it still probably doesn't make sense that he would allow me to see him talking to this evil spirit. And I'm not quite sure why either. Maybe it was to ward me away. That's my guess. I still have questions, too. We left that evening back to town. My grandmother moved shortly after my grandfather's death to a different part of the res in a different trailer. I'm not exactly sure where, though. But I do know that there was a lot of tension between my grandmother and my mother afterwards. And now that six years have gone by, I don't really talk to her anymore. She's kind of gone MIA. My mother doesn't even really talk about her anymore, either. The whole thing is weird. Anyway, I know this has been a very long story, and I don't know if it makes any sense or not. I felt the need to share it with you because, even with me being a Christian, I feel like I owe it to somebody out there to let them know this stuff really does happen. It's not a hoax or a joke. I'm not saying ghosts or demons are out to get you guys, but I'm just saying that sometimes things that happen are so out of the ordinary, it's just hard to ignore. Anyway, I guess that's all I have to say. Apologies again for it being long. I know it's kind of all over the place, 
I just wanted to tell this story. I didn't know where else to put it. If you have any questions, you can email me back. Thank you for allowing me to tell this. I was hunting out in the Alaskan bush once, where I encountered a being I have never encountered before. It was this gaunt, skeletal, bipedal figure with a deer-like skull for a head. It had a long tail and was covered in fur. It was like something out of a nightmare. I could swear that it was actually staring at me, like it saw me. Although I never saw any eyes, ever. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I could not get it out of my head. The sighting happened when I came to a small creek, following a lesser known game trail. I was not expecting to find anything and was very surprised when I saw this animal. It was standing in front of a small fallen tree and was staring at me. It didn't take off and run away like any normal animal would. Instead, it just stood there looking at me. The creature was so out of place. I didn't know what to think. At first, I was convinced it was just a hallucination, the result of consecutive bad nights of sleep, but I knew it couldn't have been. I just knew this experience was real. I don't think it was a Sasquatch. They are usually seven feet tall, and it was about five feet tall. I don't think it was a bear either. The legs were too long, the torso too thin. It didn't have a face like a bear, and its body was covered in mangy-like skin and fur. I can't explain the skeleton and gaunt appearance. I couldn't tell if this was some sort of native-like head covering, or if this was actually part of the head. It was so weird. I also could not tell if it was a male or female, or even if it was remotely human. Hands down the strangest thing I've ever seen. It was like looking into the eyes of a predator. So, I very slowly backed away, and it continued to just stand perfectly still like a statue, never moving. Not even 30 minutes goes by, and now I'm at least two miles away from that location, going back down the game trail I came, and that's when I start hearing voices coming from all random points in the woods around me. It was my own voice, but distorted and sounding like it was muffled. Then. I began hearing voices of people I knew, or who I grew up with. Impossible for them to be all the way out here. Things were escalating very quickly, and I was now becoming fearful for what was happening. I was hearing my own voice from all around me, hearing voices of those I knew. I was hearing whispers, too, hearing voices in my head, hearing things that weren't there. It was all too much. I could not deal with what was going on. I had to get out of here. I continued to walk, and as I did, I came to a very small creek I had to cross. So I walked along a thin tree line on one side, about to cross over to the other side of the creek. I could still hear my own voice coming from every direction, and I heard what sounded like a woman screaming in the distance. This was scary. I can't explain how terrifying it was. Then, I pass over the creek and realize I have that feeling again. That bad feeling I got earlier, right when I saw that thing originally. I began looking around me, but did not see it anywhere. So I kept walking, and I started hearing more voices coming from the point where I was earlier, when I first saw it. Now, with it all being too much, I just start running. I ran and ran until I made it back to my hunting blind. I just stayed there for the rest of the day until the noises and voices ceased, which they did eventually. Something I did not notice right away, at least until I got back to my hunting blind, is all the noises of the forest were silent. I have never heard a single animal make a sound. Even the creek that was near where I saw the creature was completely silent. It was like the whole forest had gone silent. It was very unsettling. I have never heard it so quiet before. It was the quietest I have ever heard the woods. And I'll tell you what, I am still clueless about trying to explain everything 
that I saw, heard, and felt. I was out with my family, gathering firewood in the woods by a small mountain creek. It was about 8 a.m., and it was very cold, like it would be in the beginning of winter. It was in the middle of nowhere, and we're the only people there. The sun was just coming up, and we had been walking for about a mile when we noticed a figure about a hundred feet away from us in the woods. It was dark and skinny, and it looked like a human, but it was hunched over and seemed like it was sniffing the ground or something. As we get closer, it began running away, but it ran in a weird way, like it was on all fours and it was quick, but it moved awkwardly, like its joints weren't in place or something. Anyway, we got to where it was and it was now gone, so we noticed a couple of things. First, was that there was this very off-putting smell. I mean, it was a really bad smell. Like if you took a bunch of roadkill, sitting out all day in the hot sun. It stank bad. Second, there was this random pile of branches about three feet away from where it was, and there was blood all over these branches in a pile. It was pretty disturbing. It looked like somebody had bled out all over, or maybe slit the throat of an animal over these branches. It made no sense. The whole thing was freaky. We were also staying in a camper this time, and so later on that night, as we're getting ready for bed and it's dark out, we hear strange noises coming from the woods, the same spot we saw the weird thing earlier in the day, and it sounded like a lot of screaming and strange gargling noises and twigs and leaves snapping and breaking. We freaked out. We checked outside and saw nothing. There was no wind that night, and the woods were exceptionally quiet, except for these noises. When it was morning time, we went out in the woods to see if we can find anything. We looked around, and we found these strange prints indented in the soft soil around the trees we saw the previous morning. Also, the smell was gone, and that pile of branches with blood on them was now gone too. Nobody had moved it. These prints were also very strange. They kind of looked like hooves, but they did have toe indents in them, and they were deep. They were not bear tracks, though. I know what those look like. They were definitely not human either. So we followed the tracks, and it went about a quarter mile deeper into the woods. Then we hit a small creek. There was no way the tracks went across the creek. So we were spooked at that point. Then, we hear the strange noises again, and that causes us to run back to the camper. The next day, we drove out of there and have not been back to that spot. Now, I'm not sure what we saw or heard, but I want nothing to do with it, if we're honest. I'm quite new, so I apologize for my lack of knowledge regarding this creature one thing I must come out and say before I go on to tell the story is that this encounter did not happen anywhere near Navajo land. Therefore, I am leaning more towards a Wendigo, or not deer. If I should move this, please let me know. It was late summer, and my mom and I had decided we should go out for a spontaneous hike. We did our research and found one that said it was a four-mile round trip. Sounded easy enough. We got up early that morning and began our trek. The entire forest had a horrible vibe. Even my mother picked up on it. She's never been into any of the paranormal, etc. We've been walking for hours now, and this forest just seemed to get weirder and weirder. We had plenty of water and food, so I really can't say if we were just dehydrated or tired. We began to hear singing in the woods, and we just stopped and stared at each other. We had to be miles into the woods by now, our step counter saying we have well surpassed the promised four miles. Where exactly were we? 
Where would the singing be coming from? We just looked at each other and began laughing. I remember her saying, no way, shaking her head, and carrying on. It's been quite some time now, and we have not encountered another person on this trail. Suddenly, this man walking really fast surpasses us and rounds a bend behind a rocky hill so we could not see him anymore. He said no words, just came up behind us and darted past. Again, me and my mother laughed and envied his athleticism, until we rounded the bend ourselves to find that he is completely gone. Out of sight, the path after that bend was fairly straight and you could see far ahead of you so there is no way he would have been able to clear that entire area fast. This time, my mom stops and says, you gotta be kidding me. We're thoroughly freaked out after this. Eventually, we reach the peak, and after walking that long, you'd think somebody would probably want to stay there for a while and enjoy the view. Well, we pretty much got to the top, looked, and then left. We never discussed it, but I could tell we were both uncomfortable and just wanted to get out of here. We're maybe halfway back through this trail now, and the sun is beginning to set. We're moving fast to get out of here. Our step counter said that we had hiked 10 miles compared to the four. As the forest got darker, I began to hear leaves crunching behind us. I reluctantly turned around and noticed it was a buck several yards away. We hurried along as to not disturb it further, but then I began noticing something. It was following us from a distance. It did so, almost like a predator, hiding and peeking. I tell my mom we're being followed by that deer, and we're pretty much at a jog now. The buck would not let us go. I would sometimes notice that it would catch up and follow just beside us. It always remained several yards away though, always lurking head down. I've lived out in the country my whole life and have seen all the deer you can ever imagine. I've never been followed by one like this. This seemed more than just curiosity. It felt horrible predatory. I felt like I was in danger, always hearing those footsteps behind me, the feeling of being watched. Clearly, we made it out unharmed, but I wonder if it actually intended to harm us or if it was just ushering us out of the forest. All in all, it was a freaky experience. Something is up with those woods. Last year, I was living in a small mountain town in central southern Colorado in the Rio Grande National Forest, a super small town. Ute natives were tragically killed in the entire area of the town. I don't usually get creepy vibes when I'm there, but it's definitely weird in many ways. I was in my car at 2 a.m. with a friend we were parked outside our house, looking down the road with only the streetlight across the street, lighting up the area. From 15 yards in front of us, we see a large animal emerge from the darkness and catch the light. We started asking each other, what is that? It's so big. Like the size of a small horse or a big deer. It walks toward us and stands one yard away from my door. We were frozen, unable to move while we stare at it so close to us, and I say, is that a wolf? It's all I could think it could be. Tall, completely silver, it looked like a wolf from a movie. As it stands so close to us, it looks up to the sky to the left, then the right, then, it runs away toward the large cliffs at the back of the town where the abandoned mines 
are, and a large forest begins. We were stunned, stayed frozen and silent for minutes until we began laughing. Eventually calmed down and went inside, confused as hell. After that, I told some co-workers thinking how cool it was that I saw a wolf. They all said it was impossible. No wolves have lived there for decades. So I researched. They're right. No wolves have been here for like 40 years, and it would be a miracle if I had seen one. Especially a gray wolf. As I look at more pictures of wolves, my memory becomes more clear. What I saw was too tall and silver to even be a gray wolf. My friend and I have not forgotten one detail of the story. I'm sure it was not a dog. If it was, that's the biggest dog in existence. I remember the world washing away as I stared at its shining fur. It was the most majestic animal I've ever seen. There were chills covering my body, and I could barely breathe. Do you think that I saw a skinwalker? I'm not sure how to begin this. This didn't just affect me, but my family in different ways, and it continued to mess with me for years after we moved from the house where it all started. I'm trying to take something that did many things over several years and just trim it down to details that seem important. I'm sorry if this reads weird or awkward. My grandmother was supposed to have traced her side of the family all the way back to an unregistered family of natives that escaped the Trail of Tears, and after telling a person this strange thing that I normally kept secret, they suggested that it might be a skinwalker, but I don't know. I know there are a lot of family strife in that house where the haunting started that bubbled up to the surface. A spirit there liked to scare me by calling my name, slamming doors, giving me strange nightmares, and even mimicking the voices of family to other members. The first time I can think of it appearing is when we were coming back from a road trip at night. Dad was driving, and he hits the brakes hard and swerves because he'd seen a wolf with no eyes stepping out into our lane and look at our oncoming car. And because everybody else was asleep, he was the only one to see it, and there was nobody around to suggest that anything had physically been there. The second time I think it showed itself was many years after. We had long moved from the house that this all started in. I was home alone at night, messaging a friend, and I seen a huge figure walking up the road. I was frozen in fear as it approached, and eventually passed by the house we were living in, and what I remember was something with a strange skull, kind of like that of a monkey skull, as a head or covering its head, and the rest completely hidden behind a cloak of some sort, of dark colored fur. It hasn't been around for a bit now, but while it was around, or possibly pursuing me, it had caused a lot of hardship for me and my family. I remember that if I talked or thought about it too much, I would draw its attention back to me when it seemed like it had left, and I would have let my guard down. Whatever it is always made me feel terrified and unsafe. I used to have symbols of protection from whatever religion I could think of to try and find some sort of protection from it. I'm not sure what this entity is, but this is not a story I share much, as I know how it sounds, and I don't want to go through the normal ridicule and dismissive comments. So this was when I was a lot younger, and I lived in Texas, probably around nine years old. You know how when you're younger, you just don't remember as many details, and it all seems kind of dreamlike. And this was like that, except I'm almost 100% sure 
It's not a dream, based on how clearly I can visualize certain aspects of it. I should just get into the story. But if you've had similar encounters, please tell me. Anyway, I love animals. Like, I just love watching nature documentaries about them and studying them. And when I lived in Texas, we had a farmer's pasture at the back of my house, separated by a rusty cattle fence that was around six to seven feet tall. Based on the fact that we had to climb a fair way to get over it when we accidentally lost balls on the other side of the fence. The cows would sometimes come within looking distance of the back of my house. The farmer's pasture was huge since we were in a semi-rural area. And that day, I could see them in the distance. So I went out to watch them and trying to lure them over to me. I had been gazing intently at them for I don't know how long when I looked to my right and saw a huge buck next to me. It couldn't have been more than a foot for me at most, but I never heard it come up beside me, nor do I know why it would have done so, seeing as deer are very easily spooked at the slightest movement. Anyway, at the same time as I saw it, it saw me. We locked eyes, and that's what I remember best, was that its eyes were oddly intelligent and humanish, and it seemed benevolent. We stared at each other for at most 30 seconds before it was gone over the cattle fence with a metallic clang. I can only assume that its back hooves struck the fence on the way over, because I remember the clanging noise and it rattling like a metal fence if you kicked it. I think I was also grasping the fence tightly because I remember that I felt the force of the metal as the buck clipped it. I looked out to the field to follow where it had gone and saw another big deer, a doe, I think, bound into the smallish thicket that was probably 200 to 300 feet away from the fence. After they both disappeared into the thicket, I could not catch sight of them anymore and I ran in to tell my mom what I had seen. I told her that it clipped the fence on the way over, and I remember her saying that it was probably a yearling. That ends my encounter, but there's some weird things about it, more than the already weird premise that I wanted to point out. Number one, the buck was huge. I think I came up to its shoulders. Now, I was nine, so it makes sense, I guess. It just seemed really big for a yearling. Number two, how could it have walked up to the fence and not noticed me standing there? It just seems very, very unlikely. Furthermore, how did we manage to look at each other at the same time without noticing one another before? And why did it hold my gaze for so long? It seemed benevolent. If it was a skinwalker, I don't know why it would be, but that's all I can think of. As I mentioned before, it seemed intelligent. Maybe that was just my kid brain, shocked at all. But it seemed as though it was staring into the depths of my soul when we locked eyes. The buck and other deer bounded into the small thicket and then completely disappeared. I couldn't see them afterwards even though I'm pretty sure I spent at least a minute looking for them. The thicket wasn't big either, so I should have been able to spot their silhouettes or something. Anyway, that's all I can think of for now. Me and my friend were driving down the road. He and I were just driving at like 11 at night. We were coming home from a friend's house and we were just listening to music really loud. Firstly, the radio started going off. It then played I Stand Alone by Godsmack, which we don't have downloaded on his phone. My friend Calvin said, did you change the song? And I said, no, I'm on my phone, what? Then Calvin said, I don't even have this downloaded. Not a minute later, it turns off and goes to static. 
We just sat in silence for a moment, and then it started playing other music I did not recognize. I was shaking, and I think he was too. Calvin said, you're not messing with me, right? And I said, no, dude, I'm shaking. This is freaking me out. Then, his light bar went out on his truck. We both screamed, and I admit, I was actually about to cry. I've had similar experiences, but nothing this bizarre. The light bar came back on. At this point, something the size of our truck ran in the middle of the road and ran across. We were screaming things like, dude, what is that? We saw it in the rear view mirror as well, and as we passed the song, the skinwalker started playing on the song. We didn't have this downloaded, and I never heard it. It was just the beginning, so it ended the song fast. But it all stopped. The static stopped. The light bar was on. We couldn't see it in the mirror anymore. At this point, we were going 80 miles an hour down a hill that's meant for 50, and we're just hoping to get back to civilization soon. We were at least 30 minutes from my home, and the nearest neighborhood, so we tried to talk about it. Our music resumed again, and it was normal. This all happened in the span of five or eight minutes. I don't know what happened, and I know it sounds too good to be true, and it sounds almost too perfect, but I just hope it at least entertained you or allowed me to share my story. Have a good night and enjoy yourselves. Cindy was my best friend at the time, so she came with me to this new house. Sorry for the bad formatting in advance, as I am on mobile. I have never shared my story on here, as I'm not sure what it was because I don't live anywhere near a res. I live in Florida. I cannot think of any rational explanation for what I saw, however. For some backstory, I lived in a city nearish Orlando and went to school with a girl who I will call Cindy. My mother worked at a different school nearby as a teacher. We were going to move towards central Florida in a very rural, absolute middle of nowhere area after school had ended. So, it was Cindy and I's last day of school, but my mom still had to teach for another week. She drove us out to the new house to stay there on our own for an entire week while she finished work and would stay with my grandmother in town. So, Cindy and I are so excited to have the new house to ourselves for a week and to go get set up in my room and stuff. We decided that we wanted to still go on late walks like we used to and thought about going that night. We agreed we should go while it's still light out because we don't know the area that well. All my area was a giant square-shaped road or block. It wasn't really a block though because any houses there were just a mailbox and a gate on the road with a driveway that went out for like half a mile until you saw the house. So, we're walking on this square road around dusk and we get to the corner of the road, go to turn and watch this absolutely massive deer walk out of one side of the road from the trees, maybe 50 yards ahead of us. We kind of just stopped or slowed to look for a second because, although I'm from up north, she'd never seen a deer being from the city, and I had never seen one so close. This thing also was a buck, and again, huge, so I told her not to get too close, as it could be dangerous. All this happened in like five seconds, while it walked to the middle of the road. Then, this deer stops in its tracks, turns its head to look at us, and just stared for what felt like 10 seconds, realistically. We just kind of watched this deer like a staring contest. Then, it turns its head forwards again, stands up on its hind legs, and starts limp walking into the other side of the trees. 
Then, we just watched the trees rustle a ton and walked home. That's when we were like, yeah, did we see that? But we hadn't walked the rest of the week, and Mom came home earlier than expected, so we felt better. So here's where I'm not sure of anything. This deer's legs were not only what they should look like. A deer's legs are opposite of ours, or a dog's. When they stand on all fours, their back knees pointed behind them instead of in front. This deer's legs did not point behind them. Its knees faced forwards, as if they had been twisted around perfectly. My mom worked in her family butcher shop as a kid, and had seen deer brought in with ankles that were twisted and broken, and healed in a completely new position. It makes sense, as they can walk on three legs as that one heals. I can't see how this could have healed both of its legs, or how they both twist so perfectly. Or, especially how it would walk on those legs alone. I think the fact that its legs were backwards is why it somewhat limped forwards, although it clearly didn't have any broken or twisted bones. It did not appear to be in pain. It had antlers. No idea if it had ears or a tail. I hear everybody say it won't have a tail if it's a skinwalker. I had no idea what skinwalkers or any cryptids were at this point. All I paid attention to was its size, which had to be at least eight feet tall, standing with a slight hunch, and its legs. I remember we mentioned it smelt like a rotten egg. I don't recall a coppery scent. It could just have been sulfur, but I'm not sure. Despite looking this thing right in the eyes, it was too far away to even see them, and my horrible vision, of course. So I can't tell you what those looked like either. I didn't look for all the telltale signs you look for in a skinwalker, because again, I'd never even heard of them. I have so many questions about this experience. Why didn't it try and attack us? Why was it in the middle of Florida? Why would it almost show us that it walked like that, instead of, I don't know, keeping its cool? If that's not what it is, what did I see? Cindy and I are no longer friends, so I'm not sure if she'd even remember. I think the only reason it stuck with me is when I heard stories about skinwalkers. I felt my heart sink into my stomach and remembered this. I do have a Navajo friend who refuses to speak about this with me, and I fully believe skinwalkers exist if that's not what I saw. I've heard of flesh gates, but I have trouble believing other things because they don't have Navajo ties, which my friend does and clearly believes in. I don't know how much about flesh gates except they're basically skinwalkers without Native American connotations. Maybe that's what I saw. Maybe this deer was also just severely deformed. Have you ever seen anything like this? This was about five or six years ago, by the way. The stories of Navajo medicine man or shamans having encounters or altercations with skinwalkers, is one not largely outspoken by them much, like a Vatican exorcist. Most modern encounters today are either a host seeking help from the medicine man, either spiritually, holistically, or physically. In most ways, they are like priests. People find comfort in their prayers, blessing and guidance in times they don't understand fully, or seeking just to be enlightened by words, wisdom, or knowledge. They are also like an alternative psychiatrist or therapist with experience in medicinal remedies, psychological therapy, or physical therapy. From what I was able to piece together from bits and parts of other stories, a group of medicine men when horses were introduced to Navajos, some with their own abilities being mediums, energy drawers, conduits, some supernatural or natural would investigate claims and rumors around the Navajo nation, seeking out these skinwalkers or spiritual 
and unexplainable phenomenons. Peoples who become host to its strange phenomenons would seek out these medicine men for help, some even traveling hundreds of miles to the southwest. In one such encounter, I've heard from an elder is that when he was a young boy becoming a man, his grandfather's grandfather would ride around the Navajo Nation and off, sometimes going as far into the Canadian territories to the Northern Territory of Mexico, helping people of all ailments, spiritually and physically, under discretion and some form of payment. He then talked about when they would come across definite proof of demonic hauntings and presences, much like how a church would investigate demonic presences. One encounter he does remember that happened in the heartland regions of the Navajo Nation. An elderly man spent a week herding his livestock to their winter property. When he finally returned home in the day, he found that his wife had not prepared their wagons with their belongings. But, seeing her rifle and horse were gone, she must be getting supplies or went to visit other nearby residents they know in their rural region. Times back in the day for Navajo, they kept busy all day, much like ranchers and farmers. They were always cautious of strangers, and burglarizing and ransacking of property was common, but low. Land tracking was a very common skill before it wasn't. He then noticed nothing was disturbed or out of the ordinary for them, but had a feeling his wife went to a nearby friend's. His gut feeling was right and seen that his wife was there, but also asked why she left their place with their valuables and wagons unguarded. She told him the following, that one of the goats came back and only stood in one direction. Stick in hand, an attempt to snap it out of whatever trance it was in. It screamed and dropped dead. She thought it could be the ailments or termites in its horns, eating away at its brain. She did not want to waste whatever was salvageable. She butchered the goat and hung its wool skin to dry in the sun, putting the still intact headless goat in back of one of the wagons. As she went about, finishing chores to pack the wagon, she heard rattling outside. Thinking it was a rattlesnake on the property, getting ready for fall, she went to find it, but came to notice the sheepskin was gone. Thinking somebody is on the property and robbing them, she went into the Hogan to get her rifle. Gun at the ready, she didn't get far before noticing that the goat skin was dragging on the ground. Thinking it was animals instead, she followed the dragging trail and kept an eye for an animal in the distance. Instead, she noticed not far ahead the skin hide was dragging itself, gliding over the ground. She shot at it more than several times, but it kept going towards some washes in the land with hill terrain. Unsure of what she had seen, she decided to not stay the night and left to the neighbors. Hearing this, the husband had her and the neighbors go find the local medicine men, common in the area, but would be a couple of days. Returning with an elderly medicine man, three men accompanied him. The wife then showed them where she stopped following the skin and they went on from there. Unable to accompany them, the husband and wife kept a bonfire going all night as a waypoint for them to see in the night sky. Late into the first night, one man came back and asked if they could spare a horse, as one of theirs had fallen into a ditch and severely injured itself. They had to shoot it. Agreeing, they let him take the husband's horse, as it was fast and knew the area. Into the next day, no sign of them returning happened. Then, night came. They built the bonfire again, so they would be able to see if they were near. Not long after, 
another one of the men came back and asked if they could spare another horse. Agreeing, thinking something again happened to their horse, they took the wagon horse. Later into the night, the final third man of the group came to the house and asked if they had yet another horse they could spare. Anxious on an update, the husband asked if they had found the goat skin. Not saying anything else, the third man asked again if they had another horse to spare. The husband agreed meanly, only that he can check on his other horses. The third man agreed, and they rode into the night. Coming upon a ridge in the night, lightened up by the full moon, and the third man rode to the sound of a sweat lodge ceremony, the medicine man and two other men were doing. Coming upon the sweat lodge, he respected the strict custom around medicine man in the middle of ceremonies. He stayed silent. It is custom among Navajo culture to be silent during a ceremony and not to break the concentration of the medicine man and strict lesson, never question what they do. The third man told the husband not to look into the open. He had to keep the glowing dim lava rocks hot and not to look back until they are done. While he sat there with the low dim fire and keeping the rocks hot, listening to the chanting, he seen a blurry white mass out in the distance below. No ambient light came from it, only a white mass, like something wearing all white in the moonlight. Being atop a cliff, looking down below to a barren, flat desert and washes, he seen it darting left and right, going into washes and coming out, going hundreds of feet in no pattern, faster than a horse can run, and way faster than somebody who can even run fast. Twilight was coming up, and the white mass disappeared into a wash to his right, and never came back out. He observed everywhere below to see where it was, and still listened to the song the medicine man and his assistant were singing. He could hear the heavy footsteps of his wife's horse, and he did as what he was told, and did not turn around once to check on the horse. But then, the heavy horse thud's steps got closer to him, in a rhythm of two, like someone walking, and he was on high alert to turn around. Then, he felt a hard clutch on his shoulder. He screamed and cried out in agony, yelling, and was ready to fight whatever it was in the night. But it was the old medicine man. The husband was frightened by feeling, a strong feeling, and a heavy presence. The old man asked what he was doing far out, away from his home. Confused, he said he came along with one of the old man's assistants to check on his horses, but instead he made him a fire watcher. The old man with concern said they had seen the skin and they were chasing it into washes to trap it in the high sand walls, but it had killed two of his men the first night when they entered the wash, by collapsing the side walls when they got close to the skin on the ground. He and his last assistant went on to trap it in the cliff sides during the day, but he could not get to the top of the cliff to where it was at. So he went ahead, and his last assistant stayed where it had last seen below. He went along around the cliff sides to find a trail up, but that took most of the day, and he came upon the husband. He followed the smell of dead animal and seen scattered meat and blood, then heard the sound of a drumming ceremony in the night, but could not tell where it was until the sky lightened up from the early morning. Then he had finally seen him there, sitting near the edge of the cliff. Thinking he was being tricked, the husband opened the makeshift sweat lodge doorway, seeing inside it was made of his horse's bones and not wood. And there, laid on the opposite side of the door, he seen the goat skin. The medicine man took the skin and they burned down the sweat lodge to ashes and bonfire. 
The husband asked how a skin could do all that. The old medicine man explained that something else in the night came for the skin on the second night. They thought it was him, the husband coming out to find them, but it wasn't. They wrote the sounds of heavy galloping and dark flashes of something in the moonlight. In the nights, they hunted it like predator animals and tried luring it into washes or caves in the washes. By sacrificing, one of their horses to collapse in the high sand walls, but no avail. Returning back to the husband's house, the wife told him that where she had put the carcass of the goat, it was gone and no tracks could be seen. When time came to go to their winter property, they never returned back to their original property. Time passed and the sand dunes and the Hogan, with no upkeep, soon fell apart over the years. When it finally collapsed in, it was never rebuilt. The way the Indians do is to dry their corn and dig a hole beside the Hogan and put it down there. Then they put a stone over it and some dirt and weeds so no one will find it. And then they take their goats and sheep back into the mountains for the winter. When they want some corn, they go to their Hogan and get it. A family did that, and after a while, they needed some more corn. They had a very pretty daughter, and lots of men wanted to marry her. They sent her with her little brother to go get it. They both rode on one horse, and when they got there, they said it was too late to go home. They would get the corn in the morning, so they went into the Hogan that they were going to sleep in. They had tied the two front of their horse, and he went off to feed, but he kept coming back to the Hogan, and his ears were up. He could see better than they could in the dark, and the girl knew somebody was out there, because in the afternoon, some men had been near there, and one man said, Now I can get that girl, and all the other men went away. And at night, she saw a dark shadow in the woods. She knew a human wolf was after her, but she did not tell her brother. So she dug a hole under the Hogan, and she told her little brother to get into it. If anyone came, he was to crawl outside and ride fast to their family, and she would try to fight as long as she could. She tied the blanket over the door as much as she could, so it would take the wolf a long time to get in, and the boy could get away. Then, later in the night, she heard some mud fall off the top of the Hogan, and she knew the wolf had come. The boy crawled out, and he cut the rope around the horse's feet. He jumped on the horse, and the horse was scared. He didn't want to stay there, and the boy didn't need to whip him or hold the reins. He ran as fast as he could, and the boy held on to his mane. Then the wolf came in, and she fought him as hard as she could. Pretty soon, the boy got home and he told his family, and his father and mother got on their horses, and they rode as fast as they could back to the sister. Her big brother was not at home. He had made a long bow and lots of fine arrows with eagle feathers on them. He could sure shoot, he went out hunting that day and stopped at a Hogan for the night. Indians do that when they are away from home. That night, it snowed a little, and the next morning, he said, This is a good day for hunting. I guess I will shoot some rabbits. And it was snowing, and he had some good new moccasins with heavy soles, and he had his feet in burlap sacks to keep them dry. It was snowing, and he was a fine shot. He could hit whatever he wanted to. He saw two rabbits, and he took two arrows and he shot them. He never missed. He was riding along, and he saw a big track, but the snow had covered it, and he did not know whether it was a horse or a man or some animal. So he blew the snow out of the track, and then he knew it was a human wolf, and there was blood too. 
So he followed that track. He followed it all day, and toward evening, he came to the edge of a mesa. And he crawled slowly to the edge, and he had one arrow in his bow, and two in his mouth. At the edge, he came to the last track, made by that human wolf. And there was no way to get down that cliff. So he circled around, and he found just one narrow path going down. He went along and saw a big stone lying against a cliff, and he knew that was where the human wolf was. He pulled back the stone and went into the cave, and saw nothing, and pretty soon he came back to a black curtain. He pulled that back and he went in. There was a narrow passage, and he went along for a half mile. Then he came to another black curtain. In a half mile, he came to another. Then he came to a fourth one. He pulled that back and found himself in a big room, which was round like a hogan. And he saw lots of men and women sitting around. They were the ones he had seen at dances or ceremonies and around the hogans. He saw skeletons and bones and jewelry and lots of things around the walls. He thought, now they will kill me. There was a small room at the left, and he went in there, and he hoped they wouldn't see him. There was a big fat man, and he was chief, and he was singing. And all these people, even girls and boys, were learning how to be human wolves. The fat man said, There's an old lady who has died about 200 miles from here, and I want two men to go there, dig her up, and take her jewelry. So two men came in front of him and sang over them, and he said to be careful. They took their skins and went out. Then the people said, There is a boy in here, and he does not belong to us. So they brought him out, and they put him in the middle, and they wanted to kill him. He was thinking how he could get out of there. He wanted to get their eagle feathers because that was the main thing to all this and then everything would go wrong with them, and they would have to stop. But they were all around him, and they were watching him. And up on the wall ahead of him was a girl's head, and he kept looking at it, but he didn't know it was his sister. Then the man said, Do you want to be a human wolf? He didn't want to, but the man said, You can study to be a wolf, or we will kill you. So he agreed and all the time he was thinking how he could get out of there. On each side of the door, they had a big dog, so if he ran out, they would make noise and stop him. Then, they passed some meat. He didn't want it because he knew it was human meat, but he did not know it was his sister's. He thought he had better take some, so he took a piece, put it near his mouth, and then he put it down inside his shirt. He thought, when I go out, I will give a piece to those dogs, and they won't make noise. Soon, the man fell asleep, and the boy pretended he was asleep. He snored, yet all the time he was looking around, his eyes were almost shut. Then, after a while, all of them were asleep, because they knew the dogs would make a noise if he tried to go out. Then he got up and took his bow and arrows, which they had taken away from him. He took a bunch of the eagle feathers. He took a step toward the door, then another, and then one dog began to growl. Then he took the meat out of his shirt and broke it into two pieces and gave a piece of the meat to the dog. And they were hungry and they wanted that meat. Then he ran through the curtain as fast as he could. They had put wood and stones behind the curtains, so he would have a hard time. But he got through, three of them, all right. And then he heard a lot of noise among those people. He sure had a hard time getting through that last curtain, and he had to push big logs and stones away. And then, he ran as fast as he could. He was a fine runner, but soon he heard a wolf over there, and then over there and then he knew they were all around him. 
he came to a badger's hole, and he pulled up a big weed, and crawled into the hole and pulled the weed down hard so it looked like it was growing there. Pretty soon, the noises stopped, and he pushed up the weed and looked around, and heard someone coming. He went down again, and the fat man came running, and he ran right over the hole. He heard him say, I wish we had killed them like I told them to. After a while, the boy came out and ran home, and when he got there, the sole of his moccasin was worn out, and his foot sore. In one or two nights, there was a war dance near, and his family went over there, but he didn't because his foot was sore. But later, he took his bow and his arrows like a cane, and he thought he would walk over there. When he got there, he saw that same fat man who was chief of the human wolves, sitting on a big white horse, dressed in fine clothes, and he had lots of necklaces, jewelry, and bracelets, and his wife had two. The boy said, I'm going to shoot that man. So he ran around the circle of the wagons and people until he came behind him. Then he put an arrow in and gave a long pull. He aimed at the man's neck, shot the arrow, and it went in so far that only a little bit, one inch, was showing. Okay, short encounter, but worth it. This was about six, seven years ago, when I was driving back with my girlfriend from a concert late at night. We both swear by this. We saw a full-grown wolf turn in or shapeshift into a man in front of us. This thing leaps onto the road and then proceeds to look at our vehicle, stop in the middle of the road, and before our eyes, just like in the show Animorphs, if you've ever seen that, throwback to the late 90s, early 2000s, transform into a very weird shaped man covered in animal skins and then run off the side of the road. This considerably freaked my girlfriend and I out and caused me to do a U-turn and drive a different way back home. My grandmother, still to this very day, believes she has a curse placed on her life. Her father used to be a witch doctor, or so I'm told. I'm not exactly sure what they're called in the native culture, so I'll just be referring to him as a witch doctor. Now, her father was a very evil man, supposedly killing my grandmother's mother for the sake of power so he could be more powerful and transform. I don't know all the little details, but I guess he had made a deal with the devil or some sort of pact to kill for power. As my grandmother got older, she fought against her father and defied his wicked ways, which caused her very own father to turn against her, to banish her from the family and the land, and to even put a curse on her, which calls in other skinwalkers, I'll say skinwalkers for the story, to come and try to come against her. Since this happened, she was probably right around 17 or 18. She has had multiple run-ins with shapeshifters, skinwalkers, who all try and claim her life. She has had her name called from the deserts when nobody else was around. She's had coyotes chase her car down in the middle of the night, and beings with horns and skulls trying to break into her apartment. This has been an ongoing thing throughout her entire life, and there seems to be no escape. She's done every single spell and war that she knows of to get rid of these things, but nothing seems to work and she's not sure what else what to do. Now, my grandmother is 74. She's very healthy and still very much alive and alert. Now, I think she's just more wary of the things that come around. But these creatures of the night are still very aware of her and have not given up pursuing her and her life. Okay, I'm still freaking out from this. This just happened last night. I live alone in my little single wide trailer, out here in the middle of nowhere, not too far away from the res. I'm sitting here, playing on my computer, when, just outside my house, I heard my father's voice calling for me, telling me to come outside. It was distinct, there's no mistaking my father. He has a very deep voice, 
His voice is so unmistakable and so deep. It always was. But here's the problem to all of this. My father passed away from pancreas cancer almost five years ago to the day. There is no way it is possible that he could be outside my house, which only means one thing. I have a skinwalker that's trying to get into my house, or at least trying to lure me. With COVID, I've been trying to keep locked up in my house, keep stocked up on toilet paper and all the necessary supplies as to not be out and spread it, hopefully to anybody. And the reason I mention this is because I'm pretty sure I've not made any enemies, nor do I have anybody that I dislike and vice versa. I have not wronged anybody. I have not done anything considerably bad in my past. So I'm sitting here, freaking out, trying to wonder who I've wronged to reap the curse that's happening to me now, and what do I do in order to ward this thing off? It only happened last night, so I have no idea if this is going to be a reoccurring pattern or if it's going to keep coming and trying to break in the house. Also, I have to ask, if it does break in my house, what is its plans? Is it going to hurt me in any way? Is its entire job to scare me? Or is it wanting to kill me, suck my soul, suck the life out of me, and devour me? What's the scariest thing you've ever seen, personally? Because the scariest thing I've ever seen is an upright walking coyote. A deformed upright walking coyote. I saw it the other day, early December, driving to work. It was still dark out, since I have to arrive at my place of work about 4 in the morning. And with it being winter, well, that doesn't leave much light to come into play. I live in the Great Northwest, and I'm surprised that there might be a skinwalker around here. Dare I even say that? I do live close to a reservation, and I have no idea if there's any ties between the two. I always thought skinwalkers were exclusively Navajo, but I guess not. I guess shapeshifting can take part in just about any native culture, at least now. My place of work, and where I live, is only roughly 20-25 miles away from the Warm Springs Reservation here in Oregon. While I don't really know too much about their tribe or any traditions at all, I'm sure they too have their fair share of people who practice black magic, and I'm sure shapeshifting, although I don't know how much of that correlates with what I'm seeing. I've seen it multiple times now, and it's the only coyote I've ever seen in my life that stands and walks casually on two legs, like that of a person, and it looks ugly, like it has burnt skin or severe mange all over its body, and even parts of bone protruding out of its flesh. I only catch glimpses of it here and there, but I know it's out and about and roaming, but I just can't quite help to think that this coyote that I'm seeing has something to do with what I'm seeing. Anyway, if you could offer me any advice, it would greatly be appreciated. A close friend of mine recently made a dire mistake. See, he doesn't really believe in skinwalkers or know much about them. But I do. In fact, I'm well aware of them, and have my own multitude of personal run-ins with these things. I know they exist. I don't need convincing. But my friend, however, went to a very forbidden burial site on Native Reservation territory, and is now regretting it. See, something followed him back home. Whatever it is has been trying to lure him out of his house at night, every single night constantly day after day. It won't stop. He says it has an incredibly evil presence to it and has a very dark energy. He started telling me what he was doing and what he did, and I told him he most likely invoked a skinwalker, and it has now drawn itself to him, following him around. I'm not exactly sure if there's even medicine men who will help him, although I'm sure there are, but I guess from what he's told me, he's already been rejected by two for what he was doing. Although his pleas are becoming a little more urgent, as he says the spirit, or whatever it is, is becoming increasingly hostile against him, which I don't know what that's going to result in or lead to, but I don't want to find out. I keep urging him to get some sage and desperately seek the help of a medicine man who can help him and bless him. How much he's going to carry that out, 
I don't exactly know, but he certainly did something to piss these things off. And something must have followed him home for a reason. His claim to me was that he accidentally or unknowingly disrespected the burial site. He wouldn't go into detail. I think probably because he was ashamed of what he did. I don't know what he did. He still has not told me. But it must be something somewhat bad. I really don't know how to explain this series of events. Maybe it was a skinwalker. Maybe it was a demon. Or maybe something else entirely. I was sitting at home, watching TV on the couch, when my cat and dog started reacting, and I did too. This horrendous smell of rotting flesh came to the house. It was awful. It seemed to move along the back side of the house, and just as quickly as it appeared, it also disappeared, and my cat and dog went back to acting normal. But when it happened, they weren't just taking notice of the smell. They started going crazy, barking, and my cat acting like a schizo. I didn't pay much attention to that, even though at the time I thought it was weird. But when it happened a second time, this time, a few days later at night time, that I began to have a suspicion something more sinister was at foot. I'm lying in bed this time, and I could almost feel like a wave of energy come towards the back side of the house and move along the entire back side, off to the side, and then disappear again. Along with this energy force, I could smell that horrendous rotting meat smell. It kind of smelled like you stuck your head in an old metal dumpster with a bunch of rotting ground beef that had been sitting there in the heat for days and maggots. It was that bad. My dog and cat again, who sleep in my bed with me, reacted the same way they did a previous few days, going crazy. It just was an overwhelming sense of evil. It was so thick, you could feel it in the air. And the force energy that I'm talking about was almost electrical, like electricity in the air, static, if you will. The entire back side of my house faces a large section of woods that are unused to my knowledge. The only thing I could possibly use to prove it was a skinwalker was that I live about 50 miles away from a reservation. Is that any proof at all that this could be a skinwalker? I rarely drink, and I have never taken any kind of illegal drug. I do feel the need to clarify that before I tell this story, as it seems so unbelievable. You know how sometimes you see something that isn't quite right, but you just can't quite put your finger on it. You stare and think that it isn't right, but your mind won't quite process what the odd thing is. This happened to me one day as I was driving through this huge forest of trees. It was a pretty decent road, but all you could see for miles and miles were just trees. Then, there would be a gap for about a mile of just fields, and then more and more trees, for miles. There were signs on the road to look out for deer, and any other forest inhabitant that might decide to jump out in front of you. I was being cautious. Sure enough, I see a deer in the tree line, which is in no way remarkable or unusual. Except, this deer seemed to be moving in an odd fashion. Needing to keep my eyes on the road, I couldn't just stare at it, but there was something weird, something nagging me. It followed alongside the trees for quite some time, and this began to ring alarm bells. Shouldn't it be tiring? How fast did deer run? It was coming up to one of the stretches where the trees seemed to disappear for a short time, and there was just great swaths of grassland before more trees. Just as the deer passed the last tree and ran out onto the grass, it struck me what was up with it. The legs didn't appear to look right. Rather than that super skinny Bambi-esque wobbly legs, these were stronger and reminded me of canine legs. What happened next afterwards seems like something out of a Hollywood movie. As the deer continued running, I kid you not, it began to change. Right before my very eyes, as I was driving along, and how I didn't crash, I don't know. 
There was no way at the time I was looking at the road. Here you go. This deer began to turn into a wolf. The transformation seemed to only take a mere few seconds. And there it was. A wolf. No sign of the deer anywhere. There's nothing else around. And just this one creature that had literally changed from one animal to something completely different. It gave a sort of weird high-pitched howl that sounded not normal, and then ran off even faster than the car into the next set of trees. I floored it, not to try to catch up with it, but to get as far away as possible. I had no idea exactly what it was that I saw, and I didn't want to know. I had recently received the news that my grandmother was sick with COVID. This was a big blow for me, since I was close to my grandmother, and I had fallen into a slump where I had not contacted her, just for the sake of it, for a very long time. So other than the distress of finding out that she was ill, the experience was compounded by the guilt of knowing that I hadn't been keeping in touch and that she might not be around much longer. I went for a walk on a lonely bike trail that ran through thick woods. The outdoors was always good for me, a place of solace. It was the sort of thing that evened me out and allowed me to think from a relaxed and level-headed perspective. The trail was wide, and it was raised up so that either side sloped down to the woods, kind of like a road, where there is small ditches on each side of the road to help shear off rainwater. I didn't do much observing of the scenery, though. My eyes were mostly kept to the trail, and my feet, as I tried to sort out thoughts and emotions. I heard a snap of a twig, off to the side. It garnered my attention, so I looked into the woods to see that just behind the first line of trees, a large buck, looking at me, inquisitively. If it had been a person... I would have been irritated at my inner dialogue being interrupted. I easily admired the beauty of the creature for a long time before continuing on, absorbing into my thoughts with a lighter heart. I quickly thanked this buck for the mood lift. Walking along, I quickly threw glances over my shoulder to make sure if my animal companion was still there. It was still looking at me as it was trailing me at a distance. Maybe I was in its territory, but it didn't seem like it was going to charge me or anything. One of the times that I looked back, I did so, just in time to see it go behind one tree, and then see a large coyote emerge from behind the same tree. That made me stop and stare. Why had the deer gotten so close to a coyote? And how come the coyote hadn't attacked the deer? I quickly scanned the tree line for the buck, but it was gone. It was as if the buck had transformed, which was impossible. But the coyote behaved exactly as the deer had. Right then in that moment, I began to get a sickening, sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach. I kept looking back at the coyote, and it went behind a tree and emerged as a fox. When I stared directly at it, it would just stand there and stare back at me, almost behaving identical to the past two animals. But when I walked on and only minded it out of the corner of my eye, it would follow and perform these inexplicable transformations behind trees, out of sight. The final straw for me was when it emerged from behind one of the trees as my very own grandmother. The imitation, or so I call it, was perfect, even the way she walked. She even yelled out to me with her voice, that voice that I knew so well. I began to run. I knew it wasn't right. Something was wrong. When I looked behind me, my grandmother had transformed into something like a wolf made of pure black shadow. Panic came over me, and I ran in that moment for all I was worth. I was thoroughly winded. It took me a while to recover, and I'm still waiting to hear if my grandmother is going to make it through or not. 
but I know whatever I saw that day, it wasn't her. I don't know if it was some kind of omen. It was just a product of all the stress I was under, I'm not sure. But if I ever see it again, I'm not going to wait around to see if it's an hallucination or not. By the way, as far as it being a native thing, or some sort of black magic, the only thing I can attribute to that is there's a reservation nearly 30 miles away from here. I have no idea if the two coincide. I will never forget the time I was walking home from my girlfriend's house one day when I was at high school and saw something that should never have been possible. It was a dark and cold evening since it was late fall and I was doing a sort of fast walk jog to move and try to get home faster. My hands were shoved into my pockets. It was freezing. I had to walk through the play park and jungle gym area that is behind houses. You have to be careful, as there's also a lot of stray dogs. Unfortunately, owners around there weren't very responsible. Now, when I first saw the dog, it wasn't exactly a shock, even though I couldn't see its owner. Still, a dog in a park... Not surprising. I carried on, and now this dog began to follow me. Something was different, though, about this dog. The eyes were strange, and it kept following me. There were still no signs of the owner, no one calling out. I shouted to it, go home. I was beginning to feel weird and awkward. Why was it following me? I was nearly home, and it still followed me, and this odd sense kept growing and growing. So, I stop before I get to my street. It stops too, looks at me. I can see now clearly what was bothering me. This dog had very bright, intelligent blue eyes. They didn't exactly look like dog eyes. Not like blue eyes you'd see in Alaskan Malamute or a husky. Not like that. They, now bear with me, they were human-like. Suddenly, there was a loud noise that startled me, and I turned to see a car coming down the road, blaring loud music. I quickly turned my attention back to the dog, but the dog was now gone. Since this road was straight, I couldn't see or rationalize how it could have disappeared, at least without a trace. Then... I caught a slight movement out of the corner of my eye, close to the wall that was next to the sidewalk by the houses, and out of the shadows stepped a man, a man who had very much not been there a minute or two before. That had no way of just appearing any more than the dog could have just disappeared. And as I saw him more clearly, he had the brightest blue intelligent looking eyes, exactly like that dog. I didn't care about not going home or following. I was so scared, I, I ran. I didn't hear any footsteps follow behind me, and once I got home, I allowed myself to think about it. It couldn't be true. It seemed as though I had been followed by a dog who turned into a man. Does that even happen? Was he what they call a shapeshifter? And if so, had I been targeted... Or was he merely just curious? My aunt and uncle hosted the family reunion every year. They were young enough to do it, and they certainly had the living space to. We were not a small family by any measure, so when it was time for the reunion, their backyard, as you can imagine, was packed. Having the woods at the edge of their property added a nice touch to the whole experience. This last year was the Lua theme, so there were tiki torches and loud Hawaiian shirts aplenty. My aunt being the social butterfly, and my uncle was just a little bit, but not anywhere near that level. Any breathing she did was just enough so she could take another breath and keep talking and laughing. And of course, her nosy Pomeranian, Lucky, had somehow uprooted his leash and bolted for the woodline. My aunt was quick enough to see him do it, 
but not fast enough to catch him before he went behind the trees. All of us got a good look at my aunt running, like she's in a marathon. She came back after a few minutes with Lucky in her arms, and he just wasn't having it. She was surprisingly very quiet for the rest of the evening. Several people, including myself, wondered if there's something wrong. She had that look like you would expect from somebody who's upset. But, like a lot of people, she insisted that she was fine. She didn't even play any games until she was invited. And when she participated, she said nothing and not even smiling. Now, my uncle was visibly embarrassed that his wife would be this upset with him about something in front of the entire family. But when he pressed her about it, she would shrug her shoulders and claim to be okay. She was just tired. My uncle knew better. I mean, the poor man was driven to a sort of quiet desperation to get his wife to stop treating him like this. And yet she told him there wasn't any behavior to cease. The awkwardness wouldn't leave. But my uncle resigned himself to things being what they were. Everybody started moving inside so that they could enjoy a little more time together in the backyard before everybody went home. If I had not lingered in the backyard, I would have not noticed the movement at the tree line. Somebody was out there, and I recognized it right away. But I had no explanation. My aunt was hobbling out of the woods as if she was injured. I ran up to her, asked her what was going on. She explained that when she went after Lucky, somebody had shoved her down and grabbed him and ran off. She was planning on going inside and calling the police to report the dog as missing. That's when my blood ran cold, when I calculated all the implications. Though injured, my aunt was still managing to talk up a storm. Whoever it was that went inside with my uncle was the total opposite. I helped her inside the house, but I chose not to tell her about the doppelganger. I searched the house as discreetly as possible. There was no sign of the other aunt. I told my uncle that was going on, and he helped me comb through the house, because he swore that twin day his wife had just been there. But she was gone when he turned around. She had either mysteriously vanished or was hiding. Well, they never found her, and we never saw her again after that. So, shapeshifter, skinwalker, wendigo, or doppelganger, Let's never meet again.